The U.S. Air Force has released video footage of an incident that the military believes was triggered by a dangerous maneuver by a Russian fighter jet near Alaska during an interception by the Air Force last week. The United States regularly intercepts Russian aircraft in international airspace near Alaska and usually says they are done safely and professionally. But this time was different, the Pentagon says. The actions of the Russian Su-35 were unsafe, unprofessional, and jeopardized the safety of all involved, not what you would expect from a professional air force, said U.S. Air Force General Gregory Gio, who oversees air forces in North America, in a statement posted on the social media platform X. The Russian embassy in Washington has not yet responded to a request for comment. The North American Aerospace Defense Command detected and tracked four Russian military aircraft operating in the Alaska Air Defense Identification Zone on September 23. At the time, the report said that the activity of Russian aircraft is regular and is not considered a threat. An air defense identification zone is international airspace outside a country's sovereign territory in which approaching aircraft must identify themselves. Vice President Kamala Harris poked at Donald Trump over crowd sizes, his refusal to debate again and his privileged background on Sunday as she hauled in campaign cash in California and held a raucous rally at the same Nevada venue where the Republican nominee had appeared just two weeks ago. During the presidential debate, Harris appeared to get under the former president's skin when she said people were leaving his rallies early because of his rambling speeches. And she's kept it up on the campaign trail. The vice president told donors at a Los Angeles fundraiser that, as she campaigns around the country, her crowds are pretty big. And then before a roaring Las Vegas crowd estimated at 7,500 she renewed her jabs at Trump over being reluctant to debate again, saying, the American people have a right to hear us discuss the issues. And as you say here in Las Vegas, I'm all in. Even if my opponent is ready to fold, Harris added essentially comparing Trump to a player with a losing hand in a game of poker. Harris' four-day West Coast trip had dual purposes, she opened and closed it with stops in Sun Belt Battlegrounds Arizona and Nevada where the vice president is trying to shore up support as Trump pounds her relentlessly over illegal migration. And her mid-stay in California was devoted to hauling in campaign contributions from donors in her blue home state. Harris also moved into what Trump considers his terrain immigration with a Friday visit to the border town of Douglas, Arizona. It was her first trip to the U.S.-Mexico border since taking over for President Joe Biden atop the Democratic presidential ticket. Harris' border visit in Arizona seemed to irk Trump. The GOP leader has spent two days railing about the vice president during his rallies, upping his personal attacks against her, claiming she was responsible for a border invasion and stirring up unfounded fears that she'd usher in lawlessness if elected. Earlier this year, we had a chance to pass the toughest bipartisan border security bill in decades. And Donald Trump tanked the bill because he thought that that bill, if passed, would have hurt him and he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And that's not the kind of president we want, Harris commented. Harris also, gave the same response she usually does to his insults, even despite Trump calling her mentally impaired, commenting on his debate performance against her. Same old tired playbook with no plan on how he would address the needs of the American people. Well folks, it's time to turn the page, she said. Harris warned the race is close and said, we are the underdog, but said she is ready for the challenge. Harris began by saying she had been briefed by Federal Emergency Management Agency Director Deanne Criswell and speaking about the government's response to the devastation from Hurricane Helene in the southeastern U.S. Well, more than 3,300 federal personnel have been mobilized 
We are deploying food, water, and generators and working to restore water and power. And the President and I have told state and local leaders we will provide whatever help they need in the days and weeks ahead. So, Las Vegas, we have 37 days until the election. 37 days. And we know this will be a tight race until the very end. And let's level set. We are the underdog. We are the underdog, and we have some hard work ahead. But here's the thing. We like hard work. Hard work is good work. Hard work is good work. And in two days, I know we will cheer on Coach Walls when he debates J.D. Vance. Yeah. But listen, also, their debate should not be the last word. I'm trying to debate Donald Trump again. And I think he should debate again. The American people have a right to hear us discuss the issues. And as you say here in Las Vegas, I'm all in. I'm all in. Even if my opponent is ready to fold. So there you go. But from Donald Trump, well, it was the same old tired playbook. The same old tired playbook with no plan on how he would address the needs of the American people. Well, folks, it's time to turn the page. And earlier this year, we had a chance to pass the toughest bipartisan border security bill in decades. And Donald Trump tanked the bill because he thought that that bill, if passed, would have hurt him and he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. That's not the kind of president we want. God bless you and God bless the United States.